Well, the United States is meant to be Israel's closest and most solid ally, but it's being a fair-weather friend under Joe Biden. Biden has, in the past couple of days, claimed that Benjamin Netanyahu would cross a red line if he went into Rafah with a ground invasion. He must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. He's hurting, in my view, he's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world. It's contrary to what Israel stands for. And I think it's a big mistake. So I want to see a ceasefire. Netanyahu overnight rejected these comments and he said the red line was the October 7 terror attacks. I don't know exactly what the president meant, but if he meant by that, then I'm pursuing private policies against the majority, the wish of the majority of Israelis, and that this is uh, hurting the interests of Israel, then he's wrong on both counts. Now, this public commentary, this public criticism is very rare and it is concerning. As journalist Cameron Stewart points out, though, in The Australian Today, Joe Biden's stance is also likely very political. He writes that Biden's growing frustration with Netanyahu reflects changing domestic opinion in the US in an election year, where polls show that around half of US voters believe Israel has gone too far in its military attacks on Gaza. And around two-thirds of Democrat voters are now critical of Israel's conduct in the war, although around two-thirds of Americans also support Israel's right to destroy Hamas. Now, Foreign Minister here in Australia, Penny Wong, today joined the fray, saying that while the world was sympathetic after October 7, now, she says, Israel is losing support and will continue to do so unless it changes course. Well, let's bring in now Liberal Senator and former Ambassador to Israel, David Sharma. Dave, thanks so much for your time this evening. Look, why aren't Biden and Penny evening. Wong making demands of Hamas instead of Israel, we always hear this constant lecturing of Israel. Um, and it seems that Israel is becoming increasingly isolated in its battle to defeat Hamas, and that it would probably win more friends internationally if it just laid down arms and let Hamas continue to commit terror attacks against its people. It's a very good question, Shari. I mean, this conflict would be over within a matter of hours if Hamas released the remaining hostages and agreed to surrender or lay down its weapons uh, at the very least. And I think too often we're hearing in public messaging, including from the Australian side, all the focus on Israel's conduct of this war and Israel's actions and none about the party that started this war with this horrific terrorist attack and that continues to be responsible for its continuation. And that's Hamas. Now, that you need two parties to secure a ceasefire and Hamas doesn't seem to be interested in a ceasefire. They seem to be interested in a, something they can sell as a victory, which leaves them in place, which gives them a propaganda coup, which strengthens the arm of Iran and other actors like that in the region, and which leaves Israel in a terribly weakened state. 